And so I think we should start. Um, thank you all for tuning in on a weeknight. Uh, every night seems the same to me, so it doesn't really matter. But, um, I just kind of have um, closed caption down below if people want to follow along that way. And then also just, since this is our first action meeting, I thought what we could all do is introduce ourselves. Um, and I have a couple of guests that are um, special guests today. But I, um, and then we'll have participants also talk about some of their goals or their thoughts about zero waste. And then also um, what we could start on for a plan of action. Oops, somebody's beeping. Oh, uh, that's my car. <laughs> <laughs> Just for fun. Um, I'm having everybody unmuted. You can control your own um, muting settings as you wish. So um, whatever you need to do. My name is Jessica Ramey. I'm a waste reduction coordinator for Marion County. Um, and I have been tasked with doing a lot of reuse in Marion County. Um, and it's really a passion of mine. Um, anywhere from upcycling and creative reuse and remaking things, I'm all over that and applying that to art. But also trying to figure out ways that we can use um, reuse and zero waste to um, help people out with access and um, just, you know, try to reach more people. So the more we can do to reduce um, purchasing and consumption habits and get people sharing uh, with the sharing economy, the better. So um, I don't know, I, I can't see who everybody is right now because I'm seeing this screen, but um, I don't know if Ann Shepke's on here yet, but uh, I started doing some swaps with her at the Salem City Library. And um, the first one was a blue jean swap. Um, actually, I think the first one was with Sonia with a homecoming uh, dress swap. So that's how we started getting uh, involved with the swaps. And then we started moving on to an arts and crafts swap. We've done um, clothing swaps as well. Uh, and then uh, making a repair and um, you know community as well. We have a um, repair fair that we do it's not as often as I'd like it to be, but um, getting together people with um, abilities and skills to fix and repair people's stuff for free. Uh, and then I've also done uh, trash and shows and whatnot. My goal of, uh, and area of interest right now is trying to possibly get a library of things in the city libraries. And I'm not sure if, um, what library would be the best choice. I'm really open to that. My scope is definitely Marion County though, because that's how I get paid. Um, and so essentially what a library of things is, is anything from a cake can to a pressure washer to a radon detector. Um, you have all these things that you can check out at a library rather than just books. And currently a lot of our libraries because of the ukulele, UFO players, um, there's uh, ukuleles to check out. In, in Staten, apparently, there are um, board games to check out. But I would like to see that list grow. And I think we have it in budget for Marion County to actually start purchasing items. So I'm looking for partnerships there. So um, I'm hoping that we can use this meeting to talk about our areas of interest and then talk about how we can meet again and then start putting very actionable items on a calendar um, to approach the businesses that will need to be um, contacted or whatever your passion is. I want to hear it and want to enable all of us to um, get more active in the community and, and empowered uh, to, for zero waste. So that's my quick introduction. Um, Alexandria, do you want to talk about um, what you do? Because I reached out to you on um, Facebook and we've actually never met in person, but I would love <laughs> Alexandria to talk about um, her passion as well. Yeah, so uh, my passion is really eco-activism um, in the community. I started with uh, doing a monthly cleanup that I host through a Facebook page that I started called uh, Salem Zero Waste. Um, so you could join that if you'd like. And uh, we have polls um, that we do where we talk about things we want to change or uh, discuss further. We have um, uh, articles that we share, a lot of articles that get shared or even funny memes um, that are about 
you know, being um, an eco activist um, or anything eco friendly and that um, um, or zero waste specifically. Um, and uh, I work for a company called Bestowed Essentials, and uh, they are currently in Idaho, but the person who owns it is an alumni of Salem and wants to start a Salem location. So um, we're trying to get a zero waste store in Salem. Um, so I'm working on that, and I have a few streets that I've adopted that I work on as well, and some community, I have a community park right down the street that I want to be working on um, some more this summer, thinking of uh, brainstorming some plans that I want to ask uh, to do um, in that area, just to get the community more interest, you know, more involved since COVID as much as we can on the creative force. It would be great, especially in the eyes of zero waste, if we can do that in an eco-friendly way, that would be awesome. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here and hear some new ideas and to get my brain um, rolling around on some things that I would like to help out with and as well as what I would like to do on my own time. Um, and I'm just really excited to hear everybody's thoughts and perspectives. So yeah, that's me. Yay. Did you say my name was Alex? I said my name was Alex, right? Yeah. So do you want us to go by, okay. go by Alex rather than Alexandria? I go by Alex. Some people call me Alexandria and I usually just don't correct it, but I figured just so we're easy on this, let's just go Alex. So. Easy. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other person I want to introduce is um, Taylor Monroe, who is an intern currently with Marin County Environmental Services. Taylor, are you still on? I am, yes. Yeah, so I, uh, like Jessica said, I'm currently the Environmental Services intern at Marion County, and I'm also a student at Oregon State University, uh, working towards my master's in public health with a concentration in environmental and occupational health. I also work for OSU's Campus Recycling as an outreach coordinator, and I do, we do repair fairs, and we do uh, a reusable cup program we're working on, school supplies giveaway, uh, and then I also want, run a Waste Watchers Club there. But as part of my internship with Marion County, my projects are focusing on waste reduction and are based on the safety of using reusable wear at restaurants during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and so I've created a campaign to reintroduce reusables into those restaurants and the benefits of doing so, worker safety and the perceived risks. And then in order to do that and understand how both the restaurant and community members feel about the safety of using reusables during this pandemic, I've created some surveys to understand those risk perceptions. So I have a link for them and um, I'm hoping you could all fill it out. Uh, it takes less than 10 minutes and then if you fill it out and you want to you can have the opportunity to be entered into a drawing to win a grocery a $50 grocery store gift card um, but I'll put the links in the chat and uh, Jessica also said she would email you all and I'm also going to put my contact information in the chat if you're interested in reaching out to me and I, I can answer any questions more about the survey but again it's really just to help me understand uh, how everybody in the community is feeling and since everything is remote right now it's kind of hard to get out and communicate with community members because um, I don't want to be unsafe about it and so I would greatly appreciate it if any of you could fill it out pass it along to other people community members in the um, in the county and that that would just be really helpful for me thank you thank you so much taylor um yeah so just like taylor said we'll um send out this um the form that for you to fill out but also um try to reach out to people that normally maybe have different political views or different ideas than even what you do because i think we want a really wide range of people's perceptions on this am i right taylor Yes, for sure. I, d I definitely want to have as broad as I can get. And, and that's what's hard about this. You know, this is obviously a very waste focused group and want to bring back reusables. And, um, and so I definitely would like to have a, a broad uh, perspective on everything. That's perfect. Um, thank you so much. Um, and then it would be great, Taylor, too, when you're, um, after you get your surveys to possibly come back and report back to the group, too. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I could totally do that. That's a great idea. Cool. 
Um, and then I also want to introduce Rachel Van Wart, who is a coworker at Marion County Environmental Services. Rachel, I'm putting you on the spot, but I feel weird not talking to you or calling on you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try and move around, so I'm actually in light. That's so weird. Awesome. Uh, I guess I look like a mysterious... Oh, there. You're, you're part of Unsolved yeah. Mysteries. We don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... My name is Rachel Van Wert. Um, I am also a waste reduction coordinator at Marion County. I work with the EarthWise program, which is our sustainable business network here in Marion County. Um, Pre-March 13th, we were uh, about four uh, businesses away from our 200th business in the county. Um, we'll hopefully start getting back to that. Uh, we have a wide variety of businesses certified with EarthWise. Um, down to, you know, the one or two um, employee shops all the way up to places like um, Ingredion. Um, we have the Carousel is back. Um, we are currently working with Salem Hospital, Salem Health, um, for EarthWise certification and Willamette University for certification, um, Chemeketa, Chiriots. Um, so quite a diversity in our group. One of the best things about our network is that we have a large amount of people in the business community doing all these great sustainable things um, for the right reasons. If you're not familiar with the EarthWise program, um, you can't just pay me money and get a sticker. Um, there's actually a set of core requirements and then other requirements that are scored to be able to receive certification. And that means people opening up their doors to um, what they're doing, their practices, their cleaners, their papers, their recycling. Um, so anyone who comes through our EarthWise program really is committed to making um, the business community in Marion County very sustainable and very thoughtful. Um, I love working in zero waste. My background is actually in uh, food waste and food waste reduction. Um, before I came to Marion County, I was with the Oregon Food Bank Network and Feeding America for 16 years, and I created the program, which is currently called Fresh Alliance. It is where the grocery stores donate anywhere from three to seven days a week, food that is still safe, and it is then taken out to um, local food banks in their community. So while it's a statewide program, so community to community program. And um, when I left two years ago, we had kept 121 million pounds of food um, since 2000 out of the landfill. And uh, now I believe statewide, it's about 16 million pounds a year that's going to people in need and not into a landfill situation of really great um, usable safe food. So um, that is a passion of mine that continues. I love talking about how do we reduce food waste? How do we, um, you know, reduce food waste across communities? And if there is going to be food waste, what is safe and usable? And how do we get that to disadvantaged communities? So um, that's kind of my little passion there, as well as I am learning to love the swaps. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that's really cool about Rachel is because of her business ties too, like say we want to talk about um, getting more durables or having a reuse cup that's all sale and white or something like that. She has the network built up so she can then contact the people that are already EarthWise certified and say, hey, would you be willing to you know, spearhead this or, or whatever. So I, I think that provides a lot of nice leverage for us. Um, and it, also just having different contacts with Mary Polk Food Share and whatnot too. So if there's a passion for um, food waste or, you know, whatever your zero waste passion is, we kind of want to hear it. So I'm wondering if we could go around the room. It's kind of tricky. I, I don't know if people want to go one by one or I could just even call on people. Um, I don't want to bug somebody if they don't want to talk though, because I know there's sometimes some shy people, but I could even just go down the list if we're cool with that. Are you guys cool with that? Thumbs up? Okay. Um, Chris Andreessen, are you on right now? I'm not sure. It looks I like- I am on. 
muted. Okay, perfect. I was okay. muted, but I am on. Can I pick on you um, to talk about your interest in zero waste? So, um, food waste has been probably my thing for a long time. And, um, also just the ability to access food more locally. So it, they kind of go hand in hand for me. Um, but yeah, wasting food in my own home drives me crazy and it drives the people I live with crazy because I drive them crazy with my mm -hmm. obsessiveness about it. But um, that's probably the biggest one. Um, I took the master recycler uh, course because I wanted to sort of broaden my understanding of sort of the issues around it and also to be better able to advocate with, again, the people I live with who are my parents my elderly parents who have very different ideas about how most things should work. So um, anyway, so that that's sort of where it started for me. But over time, I would say, like, I feel like I've learned about so many more things. So this whole concept of like a lending library of stuff, I love that idea. I've never seen it happen in person, never been able to access one. But there have been so many times where I thought, gosh, why isn't there a place to go get, mm, you know, whatever the thing mm -hmm. is that either you figure out how to do without because you don't want to go buy one more thing or you end up buying that one more thing and then you've got it sitting around not doing anybody else any good. So I really am excited about that idea. I loved the repair fair that I was a part of as a volunteer um, and the seed swap. Um, so some of those things I have found really interesting. Um, and maybe it's all sort of tangentially off of my interest in food waste. I don't know. It might all come back to that ultimately, but um, that's sort of the, the basics of my interest. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. All right. The next one on the list is Eric Stevens. Um, and right now he's muted. Eric, do you want to unmute yourself? If not, that's fine and chat. But if not, we can move on to Florence. Hello, are you hearing me? Hi, Florence. Hi. Hey, listen, I'm going, these ideas are so exciting. I've helped with the food waste with Rachel, and I've helped with the toy swap, and I'm just ready to volunteer any way I can to help you. I don't think I have any new ideas, but I'm ready. Um, I'm ready to go. Awesome. Excited. We need people. We need action teams. It's perfect. Yes. So worker bees are always needed. Thank you, Florence. Thank you for attitude. <laughs> and what's your level of commitment, do you think, um, Flo? Do you, do you want, like, you know, once every six months? What it, it, oh, more the, often than that. More okay. often than that, yes. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm pretty available. Great. Um, one of my ideas was, uh, depending upon what our interests are here, is inviting some people who've already put these things into actions in their communities throughout Oregon or beyond. So for instance, um, if we're interested in the library of things, we could um, have somebody from another library that has one and then do a presentation for us. Um, uh, and then even after COVID, hopefully we'll get to that point at some point, it would be really cool to do some field trips possibly to Portland or other communities that have um, zero waste, you know, uh, things in place that we can see some of those facilities as well. Sounds exciting. And I'm excited to get back with Rachel at the hospital. Awesome. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the other person we have is Jamie Downey. Um, she came to one of our first, ver I think it was the first repair fair at Chemeketa. Jamie, do you want to chat at all? Um, I don't really have a whole lot to contribute right now. I saw the, the meeting and was interested, so I'm more here to kind of learn and see what's going on first before I really have anything that can contribute. I really enjoyed the um, repair fair and I'd love to participate in something like that again. Great. And then didn't you also do work with a community closet as well? Yes, out in Dallas, the uh, community clothing closet. Cool. Uh, that'd be a really good thing to see. I, kn I know Salem does have some things similar to that, but not exactly like it. And I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a good thing to have. <laughs> Yeah. Um, how does this differ then, do you think, well, than what Salem has? 
I haven't been to the ones in Salem. I've only heard of what they do. Um, the thing about the community clothing closet is it's, um, it's run by a church, so it doesn't get any kind of um, government support. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't do any kind of tracking. They don't require paperwork, ID, um, proof of income. They also, um, I don't think they impose any limits for what people are, are taking. It's kind of open-ended. Um, but they get a lot of support from the community. They get a lot of donated clothes. So they haven't really had any um, major shortages except for, like, you know, couple, sometimes they'll run out of, you know, specific children's sizes. But if they reach out to the community, a lot of times they'll get it back. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Jamie. And then are you still volunteering with them or um, what, what, how has COVID changed that? I haven't been there for a while. I live in the Salem area now, so I don't go out to um, their location, but um, they, for a while, they were just, they were closed. I think they tried um, doing an, an outdoor one where they set up all the racks outside and had some people come in and they limit how many people that they have around there. I think now they're just, they're allowing people in and they just have to wear masks. Okay. Very cool. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Um, yeah, so with COVID, I think um, it's definitely challenging for the reuse sector right now. Um, however, it's great planning time for us so we can start um, thinking about implementation uh, and it gives us some time to start doing that. And then it looks like Eric Stevens um, said he um, is not connected to audio right now, but he's a, a way specialist for recology in Portland and he came across the webinar. So awesome. Thank you for sharing your contact information. Um, his email he shared with everyone. Uh, Eric, uh, I just visited um, Recology in Umsville today because there was an uh, interested party wanting to learn about compost and a coworker couldn't come, so I got to substitute. So it was kind of cool to go see um, some of your guys' work out there. So very cool. Um, let's go down the list. Judy, are you connected through audio or mic? I don't know if she is. If not, Karen McDonald, do you want to chat? Am I on? Yes, you are. Okay. Ooh, you can see your face too. <laughs> I really don't have much to contribute. I'm just here to listen and learn. Um, I work for the school district, so this is always a good avenue to talk to our students about, get them educated. Start them out young, as we always say, because for them, it becomes second nature. Um, for the rest of us, we always have to really think about things and knowing what, um, how, to be, how, to, how to use our resources the best possible. But um, so I'm just here to listen and learn pretty much. So. Awesome. And you're a master recycler too? I am, yes. What, what year? Oh, I knew you were going to ask. I think it's 2014. Nice. That's okay. great. Yeah, something like that. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and then Judy says she's going to try to connect. Can you uh, hear me? Oh, I can hear you, Judy. Amazing, these technology <laughs> things. So, um, I've done waste less for Garton for the Marion County Fair for 10 years. And, but I'm trying to find out things a little further afield. Um, we do have a Facebook Master Recycler group and it would, it is not run by Marion County. If you would all please join, then we could connect there. Um, I've been talking to the fellow from Lane County that's doing eco-generation, which is um, recycling in small communities. Um, the, I would love to go visit, but of course that's not gonna happen at the moment. And the Ben Broomsman, um, we have a Almsville clothing closet. Their major problem is space. They have one classroom. And that's it. Um, but Helping Hands in Salem is also a great place. And um, so I just want to try and connect all these things together and 
I collect some things for mm, art or whatever and would love to be able to pass some of them along and make space in my garage so I can collect more things. Great. Thank you, Judy. And then uh, could you just say a little bit about what you do for Zero Waste um, for the fair and through garden services? So I don't know if people know uh, what actually takes place there. <laughs> Well, we did for the state fair, and now we're just doing for Marion County Fair. And of course, it's not happening this year, but um, we basically hired 20 people and two shifts, and we handled all of the garbage and all of the recycling and sorted it all and then took back to Garton what we could and... Um, it was, a, it was a huge effort. Um, so, um, yeah. Did you want, was there something else you wanted said about that? <laughs> Perfect. Um, because I have a, been chatting about zero waste with people and they have no clue that it's happening at all in their community. So this is another reason why another, um, just goal I have of this task force, this uh, action group, is to get it more on people's minds to think about zero waste and that it is happening. The more prevalent they can see this in their community, I think the more willing they're going to be to tackle some of these things and think about reducing their plastic waste in their kitchen, for instance. So what we can do to promote what's actually happening, you know, and be respectful of the history piece of it, um, I think is really nice. The last the last thing, I, the most recent um, one that I did was um, I was in the Garden Recycle Center, and you know how ugly that can get with it being 24-7, and I happened to find half a case, uh, like so 12 cans of assorted beans, green beans, garbanzo beans, what have you, and they were all relatively current, and I'm going, oh, I have to take this home and find somebody, and one of the ladies that helps feed our our kitties there showed up, and I know that she's older and doesn't always have as much as she would like, and I asked her if she would like it, and she wanted to leave it for somebody else, and I told her, no, she had to take it. <laughs> yeah, I think there's lots of ways to um, save the things and, and keep it out of the solid waste stream. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. All right. Uh, up next, we have, oh, people are jumping around, it looks like. Oh, Karen Shin, do you want to chat? She has her hand up. I don't know what that yeah. means. Yeah. Oh, there Yes. Hi, hi, Judy. Yeah. Um, Judy helped me uh, get rid of some uh, preschool chairs that I found in the dumpster when they were t taking down the Y. I had about 12 of those uh, molded plastic preschool chairs and they were in the dumpster. So I, I rescued them and had them in my garage. So thanks to Judy, uh, we found two different homes for them. So um, I really appreciated that for her. And um, what I wanted to say is uh, when you, uh, piggybacking on what you mentioned about uh, a tool library, um, another thing what we have out here in Tulsa, I'm calling from Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, <laughs> is uh, they have what's called a maker space in the library. And in the maker space, they have about three sewing machines and they have a 3D printer, a, a couple of 3D printers, and um, some other things that you can use in the space. So it's not really like you take out a sewing machine, but you could sit there and you can use a sewing machine. And they also have uh, donated thread and, and, and various things, you know, if someone needed to use that. And I thought that that was a really great idea for any kind of library. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh when we had our city of Salem's planning um, with the architect, we had all these different vision boards and on there was a maker space and we talked about library of things too. 
So um, I know at one point that was on the library's radar, but I don't know if it even made the cho uh, chopping block when it came to the planning of their new space. But it's, it's definitely a worthy cause. Yeah. I'm all, I'm all for a tool li library, that's for sure, so. Yeah, well, and libraries typically also have, um, instead of people, you know, they're thinking of them as just a resource for books. Um, I think yeah. the libraries are starting to move towards um, continuing uh, curiosity throughout the lifespan of an individual. So my maker spaces work really well for that. Yeah, absolutely, totally agree. Um, Karen is also a um, trash and show winner. You haven't touted that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was last year. Um, I was hoping the Marion County Fair would be this year. I'd actually like to be a judge. So keep that in mind. The next time we have it, I'd like to be a judge. Great. We'd love that. That would be perfect. Yep. And you're also a mass recycler. Yep. I'm doing what I can here in Oklahoma. I mean, they're not as environmentally astute as they are out on the west or the east coast. And so, um, you know, it's a struggle. Um, I have to haul all my recyclables in. Uh, it's not curbside collectible, uh, at least in the city I'm in in Claremore. Uh, but I, I haul them in, I collect them, and I do what I can do. Oh, I had another question for Judy. When you were uh, uh, cleaning up at the Marion County Fair, uh, did that include picking up all the bottles for deposit? I don't know. Is you she, there? I don't, <laughs> I'm not seeing where, I think she had a call in, but I'm not sure. Um, oh, oh well, yeah. I'm I here. Just, perfect. Oh, yeah. So, um, we, we did do that, and that was part of how we paid for being there, um, because everybody we didn't have any any volunteers. Everybody was paid, um, so um, yeah. Garten has a relationship with OBRC to make that happen. Then, At the art fair, it was yeah. much more complicated. Well, and really, you have to get and turn that in for, um, if, if there's a 10 cents, you know, um, connected to that, you have to then turn it over to, to the bottle commission. But, um, yeah. And then also that's not the only way you guys were funded. Like Marion County environmental services also paid for that service, I believe. Right, Judy. Oh yeah. Marion County paid the, the biggest share of it. Um, the, and, um, but, but I really tried to stress with everybody that mm, don't let people run off with them because that is part of, part of where we're, we're paying you from. Yeah. I was just wondering about that because I'm sure after a fair, there's a lot of bottles and, and then someone had to, what, did you have to stand in line at a bottle drop or how did you redeem them? Garten has a relationship where they were picked up. Okay. We had to sort them um, and do some things like that. Um, like I said, for the art fair, um, it they didn't go through Garten, and it was much more complicated. Uh -huh. If you're going to have a quantity, you sometimes need an appointment, and sometimes that's three months from now. Um, so there's a lot of things to think through. If you want to contact me off, off whatever, we'll figure. I can help answer more questions. Um, hey, no problem. Be, yeah, and that might be another good thing. I'll put together a Google um, spreadsheet where we can just self-select and add our names and our contact information if we want to do that. Um, but if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. But at least it's a list that we can share internally with the group. Um, and then I'll I'll email that link out. Thank you, Karen. Okay, thanks. Um, and then the next person we have is Mary Ann Freeborn. I don't know. I'm here. Hello. Um, hi. Hi. Um, so I just saw this on Facebook and I was really excited to join because I thought I was like the only person in Salem doing all the zero waste stuff. Um, so I have actually worked in youth development for the last three years. So um, 
I just left Boys and Girls Club, but I was at one of the sites for three years there and I had moved it to being, it'll never be zero waste, but I did a lot of work with all the youth programs to get those things to being much less waste. So that is probably my biggest area of passion, I would say, um, because in youth programming, there is so, so much unnecessary waste. It's unreal. Um, and it's really easy to use reusable things. Um, but I also like gardening and, um, we just moved about a year ago. I live right on 24th street. And so, um, my partner is deployed, but when he comes back, I have been wanting him to put a little library in our front yard and I'm thinking about doing a little pantry as well. Um, he's not back yet, so I haven't even looked into it. So when I saw this meeting, I thought maybe this would be a good place to get started. Awesome. Um, and then, um, I also love the idea of clothing closets, things like that. I actually had one um, that I was starting in my at my Boys and Girls Club site um, because you know I work with a lot of a lot of kids who are low income, and we just you know people donate things. I just started stockpiling them, and we had everything for the kids, and it was super awesome. But yeah, clothing closets are very important, and I think those resources are out there in the community. Everyone has extra clothes or you know hygiene items. It's just a matter of making a system to get them distributed. So yeah, yeah that's where I'm at. Awesome. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to break just a little bit, but our, our street had the first little free library in Salem. And actually the first one in Marion County was in Mill City. And um, I heard about it. I'm like, why don't we have that one here? So we uh, got our neighbor to help build it. And we had all these little mosaics from our neighbors that um, all mm -hmm. contributed. So if you, if you need tips, let me know. Yeah, um, awesome. yeah it's, it's such a great thing, but we do not, we have yet, we put art out, out in it sometimes, but we have yet to put food. Um, mm -hmm. And it's such a cool reuse to see that. Like it's another yeah. spin. Yeah. We're, we live on, I mean, we li we're on 24th between center and state and it's so busy. And I, you know, I've seen little libraries everywhere. So of course that's what I thought of. But then I thought, I mean, I've seen people, I'm from Humboldt County in California and people have little food libraries. I thought that would be so helpful as well, especially during COVID. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I great. love the idea of art in one too, though, Jess. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, sometimes like if I'm making prints or something, I'll say, Hey, it's out there, but, um, yeah, that's totally fun. Uh, let me interject that those are called blessing boxes out here. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so they'll be, sometimes they'll be side by side to a little free library. And uh, I've been dumpster diving behind a, a thrift store and things get thrown away that are perfectly useful. They're just thrown away because they, they have a tag and they weren't sold by the appointed amount of time. And so I went and I retrieved a whole lot of children's books and some household things like pots and pans and, and then I I go into Tulsa which is 45 minutes away and I fill up a, a blessing box in one of the uh, low income areas and I'm telling you when I come back in a week the thing is totally empty the books are gone the household things every single thing in both those um, boxes are empty so that's amazing you know, I, I think that's always the issue is like, um, we've done swaps before where people are worried about, oh my gosh, are you going to put a limit to things or whatever? But we've always found that we have an abundance of things. And if anything, we have things left over. So we want people to take as much as they can. If they think a neighbor can use it, then, then definitely do that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, great. Thank you. And then the next one is, I think summer, summer, can you hear us? Yes, I sure can. Yay, Summer. Um, Yay, I was chasing my dog, so I had to turn my video off. That's okay. I am a little sad I'm not seeing your face today. Yeah. <laughs> Summer, can you talk about some of um, your zero waste experience and kind of where you want to see it go forward? Um, oh, boy. Um, I don't even know where to start. Um, I don't know where my zero waste started. It just was there. And I kind of, um, really went overboard at first. Um, 
And I think I alienated a lot of my family and friends. Um, but yeah, I love, um, I'm very into the tool library and the library of things. And uh, I, I really want to make that happen here in Marion County. And I feel like, good grief, I have so many friends. I feel like it could really be a possibility. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of businesses that actually have community pantries um, that they maintain, like across the street vintage over in West Salem. And um, there's a pawn shop that's right on commercial that hmm. does a community pantry. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's actually a bunch of businesses and this is like pre COVID too, um, that have been running their own community pantries that are in the kind of away from the central services of downtown. And so it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I've seen people put, um, Anything from, you know, food to household items to sometimes people put delicious donuts and, you know, food like um, restaurant food in there. And there's always produce from farms that are, is left over. And yeah, so I think that that's something that should keep, I would love to see that keep growing. That'd be awesome. Yes. Yeah. Um, even just to know where these places are for people to donate, I think is really helpful too. Although, you know, if, if there's something in your community, you probably already know about it. We, that's a conversation we probably should have in the future. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, and also, oh, I was going to say, I would really think, maybe I'll take this to the Master Recycling Group on Facebook. But I think it would be really cool for us to create a new hashtag. Yes. And just really blow it up. Let's and do to it. have it start, you know, have it start right here in Marion County, I think would be wonderful. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I'll post something in the, in the Facebook group and then maybe we can bounce some ideas around about a good hashtag for zero waste. Yeah, I love it. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and Summer is also a really great community resource. If you need anything, she'll pull out a pamphlet and give it to you. <laughs> That's a perfect connection. You're like the matchmaker of community services. I, I, I love it. I love being that person that people are like, hey, I need this and I, so most times I'm like, I don't know, but then I'm like, no, I do know. and. Yeah, so it's wonderful to be able to weave our community together even more. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Summer. Thank you. Um, so I, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of coming in with a um, kind of like already, I don't know, a, a preconceived notion of what I want. But um, I would love, love, love to talk to somebody from Clackamas. So Clackamas uh, wanted to do something about a, a library of things in their community. And so it was a waste reduction coordinator. And uh, they were thinking maybe working with one or two libraries. And then uh, all these other libraries kind of popped up in their community in the county. And so they ended up extending their funding, I think, to six or seven libraries to get this library of things started. So I was thinking it would be really cool to have um, somebody who worked on that project come chat with us so we can learn a little bit more about that. I don't know if you could show a thumbs up or if you think that's a good idea, but I think that would be super fun in the future to have. Um, and then also if you have other topics that you really would love trying to think uh, a community speaker to come chat about, I, I feel like we need to do some research before we start um, chatting with people. I have already talked to the librarian, um, Sarah, who is somewhat new. When she first came to the city, um, we sat down with her and talked about this library of things um, idea, but she said because they were moving, it was just too much. Their bandwidth was really limited at the time. 
Um, and I don't know how much they've changed that. So um, since then, I've chatted with her a couple times, just uh, informally. But we could even set up another meeting and, and talk about that. The other thing that um, is coming up is a DEQ, um, so Department of Environmental Quality. They have a grant program that will come out mid-July, uh, so this month sometime, and they're going to give preference to um, repair and reuse in the community. So um, that might be a really interesting funding mechanism for any big ideas that you guys might have as well. Um, anybody want to chat about something we haven't covered already? Um, I, I mean, reuse and zero waste is such a huge, broad um, conversation. I, I'm not sure if um, that's, you know, the, the library of things is something that everybody can get behind. I definitely don't want to choose anything that somebody's not passionate about. So any thoughts? Well, just yeah, one thing. Oh. oh, go ahead. Oh, um, I wanted to uh, say something about the library of things. It would be really nice because I know a lot of photographers in the area. If we had some way, and this is something that uh, my boyfriend and I have been talking about for a long time, what we'd eventually like to have is um, some sort of library for uh, props, uh, things that um, you use something for a photo shoot once and then what do you do with it? Does somebody else want it? Can it be modified for somebody else? Um, but something, or for um, for cosplay pieces, because there's a whole lot of stuff that you know it's a one-time use kind of thing, and that's you know what what do you do with it after that? Totally, you know, it'd be really cool if we could make stuff like that available. Yeah, like I'm thinking like a globe or a chalkboard for back to school stuff, or <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool, Jamie. Somebody else was chatting. Was it you, Rachel? Oh yeah, I just, uh, I'll actually just add on that while my thought is still there. I think for things like props too, um, you could even move that to if someone had an event. So, you know, instead of having to get, you know, go and buy a bunch of silk flowers, if there's silk flowers that people can use or things like that, you know, um, I. I'm seeing more and more people get very creative and very sustainable in their events and that that's kind of the thing too. It's great if you know a sustainable event company, but not everyone has the income to go hire someone. So being able to just, you know, if it's a birthday party or a consignor or, or just whatever that is that someone could go get it, use it, bring it back and um, just have lovely memories with that. I was just making sure that everyone who wanted to check in checked in because I kind of lost track. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Is there anybody that would like to talk? I think I went through the list, but I'm not positive. I I think so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and if not, um, yeah. Thank you, Rachel, for putting it in the group chat too. If people can't talk or don't want to, that way they can definitely um, group chat. And I think for me, kind of, Chris, you said it too, it all ties back to food sometimes. For me, I'll, I'll admit it. Um, you know, whether it's a library or things or some other kind of mechanism for sharing, um, what we see a lot of times or what I've seen a lot of times in my past history with Feeding America and the food bank is that um, some people are not cooking um, and using food because they don't have the means to use it. So, you know, it's great to tell somebody, oh, you could make jerky or, you know, apple chips, um, but if you don't have a dehydrator or if, um, you know, there's, you're, you're all of a sudden transitioning and you're in a hotel until you get housing and you need a crock pot or an Instapot or something like that. Or even if you're just, you know, all of a sudden having, you know, 50 of your family members move in with you and you need to do something. I, I think um, around the food issue, we always talk about food and the access to food, but sometimes it's also how do you let somebody try new things with cooking to reduce food waste without them having to go buy a 
you know, an item, they can test it out first. Um, a lot of times I will see in community groups and I, I try not to get a little frustrated, but people will go, oh, you could go to Goodwill or wherever and get a used crock pot for $9. And so um, $9 might be a stretch for people, especially if they've never used a crock pot before. So how lovely would it be that you could check out a crock pot for two weeks, try it out and then make that decision if that's something that you wanna have. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that would fit in the library of things or that would be something else, but I, I definitely see that as a great way to connect people um, to local food and to healthier food and to um, access to preserving food. Absolutely. And I think there's a lot of cool tie-ins that we could even do um, eventually once a library of things gets established that we could have how to um, prepare zero waste meals with the instant pot or whatever the the things that we can pull off the shelf at the library and have um, some of those kind of learning moments for free activities I think would be super cool. Um, I was wondering because you were talking about libraries. Oh, Chris, uh, so you had your hands up. I'm going to talk to um, Summer right after you, but Summer, just think about this for a quick second. Um, about how the city of Kaiser is different from their libraries. Um, but I want to hear Chris's thing before uh, she forgets. <laughs> well, only because uh, Rachel made me think of it. We used to do uh, tubs with sort of a starter kitchen set, often from Goodwill stuff, but decent stuff, matching, at least matching plates and things, even if they were kind of 1970s era. Um, but we used to do, do these sort of mini collections for our students. Cool. We stopped doing it because we ran out of storage when we had to move offices and we didn't have as many students living off campus, but um, it was an, an easy way for people who wanted to do something to help somebody could put that together relatively inexpensively and then they could be available to give. So if we hear of someone like she, you were talking about, Rachel, that needs a starter or something, you know, maybe they're coming out of a horrible situation, maybe they don't have the finances to do things and it, it was sort of a nice way to get a kitchen going. Yeah. Just a few pots and pans, some dishes, silverware, you know, the kind of basics. And it was like, here, you have a whole kit. Um, and I don't know how that could be distributed, if that could be something that people could get. Like, I know there are lots of buy nothing groups on Facebook and stuff like that, but not everybody's part of social media. And so it does feel like there might be a need for other ways to let people know stuff like that might be possible. That's cool. And people who don't, you know, if someone does have the $9, they can go put that kit together and then, you know, give it for someone. Totally. I love that because it, it is expensive to start out your kitchen. I just, yeah. uh, I remember those days. <laughs> yeah. That's a... Oh, and then um, Judy Skinner said, Chris Helping Hands does this. I know is... they do some things. Do they do boxes, like a whole kitchen in a box? I do not know. I've given them lots of bedding. I know they do bedding sets and other kinds of things like that, but I wasn't sure about kitchen sets. It would be cool to have um, a talk from Helping Hands, somebody who can chat about their services would be amazing. I have a co-worker whose mother works there or oh, volunteers cool. there. If, okay. If that might be somebody who could do it. That would be awesome. And I connected with them the other day as well. Um, I don't know whether they do boxes. I think more it's, Mm, here's the shelves with the kitchen stuff. What do you need yeah. um, to be more flexible? But they said that one of the things that they really needed was kitchen stuff. Um, they even made time for me outside of their regular donating hours because I had pots and pans. Nice. That's good feedback. Thank you, Judy. Um, Summer, can we chat a little bit about Kaiser? Do you have any information? Because I think Kaiser's library is set up differently than the Chemeketa. I don't, what do they yeah. call it? Yeah. You betcha. Um, Kaiser is just, it, it, they just have a small community library. It's a nonprofit, all donation. Um, it's all volunteer there. All the staff is volunteer. Mm -hmm. All the books. Uh, they do have some endowments, um, some grants where they've purchased books and materials, um, media, but yeah, it's really tiny. It's on the old Kaiser school. Um, but yeah, it's not, 
there's it's not big there's not a lot of stuff there um and then what's because the it is mm -hmm. what's the accessibility so um i think with salem a library you just need to show like proof of residence which may be hard for some people i'm not sure so i just want to know about accessibility if anybody has anything to share about that that would be really nice Oh, and at the Kaiser Library, you can get a library card. I mean, there if you live in Japan, it doesn't, they don't, it doesn't matter. It's just ten dollars a year is what they ask, um, and it's a family card. It's for your entire family, and uh, yeah, that that is also another way that they keep the library open is by asking for that ten dollar a year membership. Do they ever waive that fee and do uh, scholarships? Oh yes, there there is scholarships. Um, there's, you know, they have small partnerships like Chariots gives them bus passes, um, day passes for the community to just come and get. Um, there's always a free box in the library. And so um, people in the community just put books and stuff in there. And uh, yeah, not really any food, of course, because it's a library. Uh, but you know things from puzzles to house goods um a couple of the volunteers knit things so there's always hats and scarves and um stuff for people to take cool. uh yeah yeah awesome do you think they would be receptive to a library of things idea or do you think they would have space they definitely do not have space um yeah there's i i have no idea there's Every kind of inch of the Heritage Center is taken by the theater or Kaiser, you know, Art Association is in there, the museum's in there. So every kind of inch is taken um, of that building. But yeah. Cool. Thank I, you. Um, uh -huh. The reason why I also like the library piece of things is that you already have a group of people that are checking in and out things. There's already a process set up. So it's really easy for people to, um, for us to implement a system. Um, but with that said, I also don't want there to be any barriers for people um, for participating. So, cause to me, that's the purpose is the equi equity part of accessibility and whatnot. So um, any yes. other with CCR, with the um, Schmeckter Library System, if you're in a city that's a member, then you get a card for the system. If you're not, there is some kind of a thing, and I it keeps changing, and I can't keep track. But um, I don't remember how they do that, but I'm sure it's on their website. All right, we have three minutes left before um, we hit the eight o'clock hour. So I would welcome anybody else's thoughts. Um, but what I'm thinking about for next month is possibly inviting somebody who, like I said, um, has worked on the Library of Things to come present to us. Um, and then possibly uh, set up a meeting quickly after that to start putting things on the calendar of an action plan. What are your guys' thoughts? Summer, thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you, Summer. Sounds good. Okay. Is there anything else you guys would like to look into too that we can move forward on? Can we just think about like, okay, so I get, 100 CD cases at Garten um, that I can just, that I can post them to a smaller group than all of Marion County um, as a way of getting them distributed. Yeah, Judy, the hard thing from us is, as you know, we're limited with Marion County because we have public information requests and archiving issues. So um, that might be something that the group might want to take on, though. Okay. Or you could set up even. Um, but that, uh, like, the buy nothing group might be another good one 
to, to use for something like that? Have you tried using them at all for excess? My experience with them was they had really strict rules about, so somebody asked for coffee grounds and you couldn't recommend your friend that owned a coffee shop. You could only donate them from your own house. And that was hard. Yeah. So their purpose is to get like hyper um, centralized essentially with the neighborhoods. So trying to build up resilient communities essentially that can rely on each other rather than external kind of help. So um, that might be an interesting thing for you to tackle or look into as a, a, a Facebook group that could possibly do something like that. That has possibilities. Yeah. Anybody there else? are also oh, there okay. are also other groups on Facebook that are like Free Salem and um, things like that that are a lot looser in the rules um, than the actual buy nothing groups. Um, and a lot of it is just, I mean, people just really want to get rid of their stuff, you know? So it's not, they're not trying to, you know, give it to somebody that has the most deserving reason or they just want to get rid of it and want to, you know? So that's also another place to look on Facebook as well. Perfect, Summer. It's, it's interesting. Can you send, okay. oh, Summer, can you send some of that? Some of some ideas to Jessica for the notes from our meeting. What was that? Can you send some of the other um, groups on Facebook that you were talking about to Jessica, and she can send them out um, to us after the meeting? Oh yeah, sure. I think they. It's just really a simple search of like free stuff Salem. I think, and a whole bunch of stuff will pop up. Okay. Yeah, but I can't. I mean, the one I only look at a couple of them because I don't need stuff. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I can send them along. Sorry right. for the squeaking. It's okay. It's really fighting. <laughs> My ears perk up. <laughs> um, okay, guys. So I am going to, um, actually, I'm going to do this tomorrow because I'm going to put a, a link to the meeting as well. And it takes me uh, some time usually to upload it to YouTube. So tomorrow I'm going to send out a link. It's going to have, um, Alex is going to have your zero waste group um, on YouTube. A link to that if that's okay with you, Alex. Yes, it works. Sorry. I didn't awesome. want to, yeah, I took my screen off. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, that would be great. And then as well as um, the survey that Taylor has to fill out about durables and perception mm -hmm. of renewables during COVID. And then um, I'm also going to send out a link that we could all fill out our contact information if we feel comfortable sharing that. Um, and then well, I'll also probably do a doodle poll for this next one to see with you guys already, since you're interested, I'm going to send that out so you guys can fill that out about your availability for the next meeting, and then we'll reach out to a speaker. So um, if you have any ideas about um, things that weren't expressed during this meeting, feel free to email me. But I really appreciate you tuning in, and I'm looking forward to the great work this group's going to do. Yeah. I know that this is, uh, we're ending the meeting, but I just want to encourage anyone that if you have anything that you're making that is zero waste, that promotes zero waste, or just reducing something, make a short video about it. You don't, it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. some great production. Um, you don't have to have terrific lighting or a script. Um, just do it. And I really mm -hmm. encourage people to just, you know, put the stuff that you're doing out there. That's great, Summer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And once we get that hashtag figured <laughs> out, that should be easy to connect with people that way too. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Yeah, I'm excited about that. All right. Thank Talk you. to you later. Till next time. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thanks.